Named after the car that Renault used during their 2006 Formula 1 season, the Renault Megane R26 was met with critical acclaim from the moment it was released. Although its looks were divisive and the stickers that were plastered on the car may be a little bit over the top, the R26 had the performance to back it up. Its 2 litre 4 cylinder turbocharged engine producing 229 pound feet of torque and 225 horsepower at its peak. Punchy but by no means class leading, especially in today's current hot hatch market, but it was never the power of the R26 that stood out. Its most notable trait being that limited slip differential that enables you to corner at speed. This Megane, however, isn't completely standard. In fact, it has 330 horsepower. Yeah, 330 horsepower, um, hybrid turbo, 19T hybrid turbo, engine dynamics. Um, engine was built by Alex, yep. AW Motorworks, and you know he's uh, he's done a brilliant job on it. You know, yeah, he can't was re yeah, I can't <laughs> he's, he, I can't recommend enough to be honest. With you, you know, so anybody who's new to Renault Sports, you know, who's in the south, he's your man to go to. Um, yeah, so obviously uprated pistons, wasn't the pistons, pec rods, yep. Um, yep. big end shells, uh, wasn't the valves. Um, Cat can valve springs, full works, you name it. Yeah. It's all been done. Um, only got it done because you know they were known for going bang. So I thought I might as well just put it to rest and all that, you know. Yes. So uh, yeah, yeah. and then uh, I know I can drive it and it's not going to blow up on me. Yeah. But um, yeah, so obviously some other things got like six thirty cc injectors, um, AirTech intercooler, um, KTech induction kit. Um, I'm trying to think else now. I always forget something anyway, so yeah. um, it's got a 3 inch Scorpion RS240 exhaust. Nice. Um, Everything you've done with the styling bit as well. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's the absolute car. Like, yeah. Show the car, it's uh, like Maxton's, I've got Maxton splitter, Maxton spoiler extension. Yeah. Got the R26 R spoiler on it as well, and you know, brakes as well. I've not, I've not got nothing fancy on the brakes, mate. I've only got like Brembo HC discs and like Frodo yeah, yeah, DS2500 yeah. race pads and that. Um, a lot of carbon fibre, <laughs> a bit of an addiction to be honest with you mate, okay, yeah, carbon fibre, which was, that was all done by um, yeah. carbon yeah. skins, carbon, you done on the car, you done on the uh, carbon fibre. Yeah, and here as well it continues. And yeah, that was, all, all my carbon fibre is all done by Matt at Carbon Skins, good friend of mine, you know, he's, he's again brilliant at what he does, um, every time I go little bits, Yeah. so yeah. Obviously. What side is it to open the bonnet? Uh, that's like down there. Oh, is it? Down the other side. So we haven't had a look at that yet. Same, yeah. as, same as the Clio, mate, it's all good. <laughs> but um, no, um, engine dynamics, Andy done all the mapping. Again, if anybody wants to go down for mapping, and Andy's your man, he's, yeah. he's, a, he's, a, he's, a good, he's a good geezer. You know, it's just, it's just me all over, to be honest with you, mate. That popped it. Tag pull thing here. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. Okay, you've got a bit of uh, forged motorsport stuff going on here. Yeah, I've got a couple of forged pipes, make it look a bit prettier because the Megan engine is not the best looking thing in the world, but... Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of plastic trim on these around yeah. the edges. Mate, you want to try change a headlight bulb then? <laughs> it's, a, it's a bloody nightmare. It's got to come off a bit. Yeah, front... Bumper off? Well, you can, you can go under the arches if you've got skinny hands and that, but yeah. I don't think my sausage fingers will get up there, to be honest with you, so... Yeah. But if a bulb ever if if a bulb ever blows and that, I'll just get Alex to do it. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, I'm again, engine's not, it's not say it's not it's not a pretty looking engine, but you know, since Alex has rebuilt it, he's made it look you know presentable. This, this is not standard, is it? This bit. Yeah, that's that, standard. That is okay. Yeah, so that's the end. Alex has just painted it all. Oh, okay, so that's why it looks so nice. Yeah. yeah so I'm thinking it's aftermarket because it looks so fresh. Yeah, normally they get a bit like when they, I'll get old, they rust and they go discoloured. But Alex, obviously, when he rebuilt the engine, he sprayed it all and made it look fancy and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, yeah. Um, no, it's very nice. very nice. He's uh, yeah. It's also it's got a, a upright actuator as well, turbo smart one, just so it runs a bit more power. Okay. And it's got a recirc valve as well, Pro Perfect recirc valve, and it's pretty loads of bits that I forgot, mate. But 
all it all comes together to make one very fast, nice to drive again. It goes all right, yeah, <laughs> it's not bad. So, first impressions of behind the wheel, it's a really, really nice place to be. Just like the standard Megane R26 that I drove before, it's really nice inside. It's a lot more better built than my 172 Cup is, and it feels really, really planted on the road. Again, wider track, more stability, and as it is right now, you wouldn't really know that it's been heavily modified. It feels pretty quiet. It's You've got a bit more of an exhaust note when you change gear. Sometimes you get the occasional pop, but other than that, there's nothing in here at the minute that really alludes to the fact that you're driving a high boost, highly modified Megane. When I put my foot down slightly, I can feel it begin to spool, and I get actually a really cool little turkey noise there, which I love. I feel like my cup, actually. Uh, but yeah, I haven't had a chance to open this thing up yet, so when I do, my impression, my reaction will be genuine, because you get the sense that there's something lurking underneath here, something a bit more, a bit more serious than what, what we're getting right now, and I know, and I can feel, I just kind of, you know, you just know there's a bit of power there. I know 330 horsepower, even in today's hatchback market, isn't a load of power, but what you have to remember about this car is that it's front wheel drive, it has a differential standard anyway, so it can cope with it, but it's a far more raw and visceral driving experience than you would get in a brand new Golf GTI, for example. Renault, you know, people slate them, um, and actually Renault Sport as a brand now is dead, believe it or not, that's no longer, it's gonna be taken over by Alpine, but, one thing that Renault always have done and always did do really well in their Renault Sport division was put a great hot hatch together and this really is no exception. So the road is uh, opening up now and we can finally get to... <laughs> Getting pops there as well. Wow, seriously, that is aggressive. I'd say it feels quicker than my cup, definitely. It's, uh, but in a more refined way, if that is even possible in a uh, 330 horsepower high boost began R26. Yes, and uh, getting to that point again where I said it before, it almost feels too quick. Like it's, it's really difficult to explore this sort of power on a on a bumpy B road without feeling like you're shaking the car to bits. But I know it's there, and it feels like such a capable car. It feels a lot more planted than my cup does, that's for certain. And uh, yeah, just overall, wow, like, I'm going to try and give it a bit more. Clutch is quite high on it, which is not a bad thing, I guess. Um, I think it's an upgrade to clutch to deal with the power, of course. <laughs> Getting pops there. Pops left, right and centre. Oh, wow. This thing's brutal. Yeah, it feels, it's a, it's way quicker than my cup, or if it isn't, then it sure as heck gives the illusion that it's making it feel a lot easier to drive this hard. This just feels so fast without actually having to try. And of course, yeah, in the corners as well, we've got that, we've still got that Megane R26 diff doing the business, doing the bits. And I, I, I mean, I've been following, or Kyle, who owns this car, has been following me all day really in the cut we've been going to different locations and filming and seeing this thing in the rear view is is pretty cool but I, I do think it looks really aggressive that's one thing that I've always really liked about the Megans is how aggressive they look compared to the cup they're far, they're a lot wider and uh, a lot meaner stance on them and the bits that Carl has done to this just make it look so special inside you've got all the carbon fiber parts as well which I really love. Um, it's not over the top, so it kind of looks almost OEM in a sense, but without being too in your face. It's got some lovely car mats in here. And yeah, overall, it's just a really, really nice, well cared for example. Too many cars these days are sort of stripped out or not a lot of thought is put into them. And I think this is something that Andy at Engine Dynamics, who mapped this car, said to Kyle is, you know, you've spent some time on this, you've spent some money, and it's actually really nice to see a car that's cared for and done right, because too many cars are stripped out and made into track sort of track toys and without much thought, whereas there's been a lot of thought that's gone into this car and it shines through in the way that it drives and the, the way that it feels behind the wheel. It's a really, really nice place to be. I think the, the best place for this sort of car is 
as clean as it is would probably be the track because that's really where you're going to get the most out of this car it feels quick it feels faster than you can drive it down a b road and to be quite honest i don't know about you but i don't really get a great deal of pleasure in driving fast down a dual carriageway it's just not what i'm about i don't like that i mean there's no real limit to how fast you can drive in a straight line so where's the excitement the excitement in these cars especially in renault sports comes from driving them hard down a twisty road and this car is just perfectly set up for that the person who's done the most work on this car is actually alex at aw motorworks who I have used personally before for my cars and stuff and he's his work is exceptional he's done really well for himself he's got his own setup now his own garage and some of the cars that he has in there are really really cool you know you kind of wonder to yourself where do these owners get this money from to do these massive crazy builds but that's the thing I guess with these cars is that they're a passion project aren't they they're something that you spend time on you spend money on because the end result is something that nobody else has and I think there's something to be admired about that. I wish I could drive this car quicker on camera for you guys so you could, so you could see more of it but I just can't. I just can't legally drive this car quick enough. Like it's, we're basically cruising and it's just, yeah. Past a Porsche and a Civic Type R. I think we could have those, don't you? I'm only in fourth right now, and I, yeah, it's just. It spools up really nicely. It's quick to spool up as well. It can feel a bit flat at times, but I guess the other good thing about modifying a Megan R26 is that they were boosted from factory, so you already have that turbo set up there. All you're doing is improving bits around it. It's money well spent because at the end of the day, as Carl said himself, if he was to sell this and buy something else that was as capable as of a car, then he'd be spending perhaps double the cost of what he spent on this. And yeah, it's, I think this makes sense. This car is brilliant. And I like the let off on the pops. You get some pops when you let off, which is nice. It has got an overrun map on it. Um, and it does pop quite frequently actually when you really give it some when you change up which is nice but you don't hear it as much but from outside the car it's pretty damn loud I'm also really liking the steering wheel as well I think it's been trimmed and brought in a bit on the inside quite common for Renault owners to do this because sometimes when a wheel feels really flimsy it doesn't quite feel right so what Carl's had done is he's had this sort of thickened on the inside and it creates this illusion of a a smaller wheel but also something that's a bit more tactile and a bit nicer to grab onto because when you're driving a car like this the ergonomics and the way that the car feels to drive the gear the gear change and the wheel are like your two biggest points of contact other than the seat so they need to feel good they need to feel right and this feels exactly that way 15 years on from its initial release, the R26 remains an incredibly fun and capable car to drive, even in standard trim. Although its predecessors boast improved performance out of the box, the R26 chassis and platform has stood the test of time, capable of hustling you down a B-road in a manner that's reassuringly familiar to those who love the Renault Sport hot hatch dynamic. There's a temptation when modifying a car to go over the top, to add too much power, and to lose focus on drivability, engagement, and enjoyment. But 330 horsepower seems to be a sort of sweet spot for this car. A happy medium between raw, aggressive power delivery with room to still explore just how fantastic the chassis of this car is. As always, a massive thank you to Carl, the owner of this car, for letting me film this video. And thank you to everyone for watching.